Popcorn used to be banned at movie theaters. The history of movie theater popcorn has many twists and turns, which is unbelievable considering we're talking about movie theater popcorn, but it is what it is. 83% of Americans get popcorn at the movies, with 45% almost always getting the buttery snack. The 17% of haters who do not get popcorn at movies, and I have no idea how they survive, used to be in the majority, because almost a century ago, popcorn used to be banned at movie theaters. Let us travel back in time so we can fully understand how movie theater popcorn came to be. We've gone too far. We've gone way too far. Part one, popcorn origins. Not all corn turns into popcorn. Like if you got an ear of corn from the grocery store and you heated it up, it's not like the entire thing's gonna explode into popcorn. It's just gonna get warm. Popcorn comes from a variety of corn called I actually cannot pronounce that. It's on screen. These type of kernels pop when heated. The earliest of popcorn was over 6,700 years old. Located in Peruvian temples, it was crunchier, did not fluff as much, and probably was not doused in fake butter. Indigenous individuals living in the Americas figured out what corn made the best kind of popcorn and cultivated the most desirable corn together. Popcorn spread all over the Americas. When French explorers were doing whatever they were doing back in the day, they saw the Iroquois tribes making popcorn in 1612, and settlers began making popcorn themselves. Some of the settlers ate popcorn, sugar, and cream for breakfast, just like we eat cereal. Skip ahead 200 and something years, and popcorn was thought to be a fun snack by Americans. Back in those days, you literally had to pop kernels over a stove or a fire or whatever to make popcorn. It wasn't the easiest thing to do, I assume, with popcorn flying over everywhere like a hailstorm of fluffiness. Americans in the mid-1800s ate popcorn at social events or, you know, by themselves. Maybe some of them wanted popcorn but didn't have any friends available. I'm not here to judge. But then, in 1893, everything changed. A man named Charles invented the modern popcorn machine. What made the machine so special is it could make uniform, perfect popcorn in a self-contained space. You can't guarantee perfection over a fire. This was a game changer. The machine was perfected over the next few years. In 1900, Charles made a version of the popcorn machine that could be moved on a horse wagon by a horse. Nothing like the smell of horse poop and fresh popcorn in the morning. Don't look at me like that. You were thinking it too. The popcorn machines on Main Street USA at Disney World look like these popcorn machines. Nobody cares, but I thought that was super interesting. Anyway, with popcorn machines able to produce popcorn anywhere, the snack became much more widespread. So why was popcorn banned in movie theaters? Part two, classy, not crunchy. In modern times, movie theaters can be kind of gross. You know what I'm talking about? When movie theaters originated, many of them were classy. Unlike the sweatpants cinemas we have today, Movie theater goers of the 1920s would be horrified at the state of our modern movie theaters. Well, okay. The earliest theaters were called Nickelodeon, which were the most popular from 1905 to 1915. They weren't necessarily the classiest of establishments, but they didn't allow food inside. Popcorn vendors who were using portable popcorn carts could easily set up their carts outside a theater and sell popcorn to people going in or just random people walking across the street. But the people who bought popcorn outside the movie theater had to finish it before going inside the theater. But as movies evolved from short films and got longer, many people started thinking of movies like stage plays, only filmed. They were theaters with live performances, and they were theaters that showed movies. Hence, movie theater. Movie palaces began to spring up in the 1910s and peaked in the 1920s. Many of these were super fancy, with fine seats and grand chandeliers. Most theaters in the 1920s varied in fanciness, but especially in the silent film era, where patrons had to know how to read to know what was going on, many movie palaces were thought to be upper class. They went for the lowbrow people who didn't know how to read. So what did movie theaters not want in their fine establishments in the 1920s? Any guesses? Anybody know? What they didn't want was for you to not like this video because the higher the view to like ratio on YouTube, the more people that YouTube shows this video to. Terrible transition, but you know. The correct answer is popcorn, but please like the video. Popcorn was cheap and easy to make. It was portable and it was low class. Considering theater owners wanted to stay classy, they wanted to keep popcorn out. But some patrons wanted to bring their fresh popcorn in. So of course, movie theaters had to ban popcorn inside because they needed to preserve the classiness. Now let me just level with you for a second. You're a human being, I'm a human being. Do human beings always follow the rules? Hmm? I need to back the microphone away for a second.
No, they don't. The delicious temptation of hot, buttery popcorn and people not wanting to stand outside and finish this hot, buttery popcorn instead of going inside a theater and being comfortable was too much to handle for some people. Obviously, because people are people, people started putting popcorn under their coats and sneaking it into the movie theaters. But you know, there's a few problems with that. Maybe you sneak the popcorn in, but then you start eating it in the theater. Everybody can see it, everybody can smell it, and it leaves crap behind because you drop your kernels everywhere. There's no way you're going to get a Away with that one, it was a problem. It got to the point where movie theater owners had to check people's coats when they came in just to make sure they were not smuggling popcorn into their movie theaters, which, you know, many of them were. Popcorn bans were present throughout the 1920s, but eventually popcorn was allowed inside movie theaters, but only out of necessity. Part three, sad world. In 1929, the American stock market crashed. It was greatly depressing. Money became tight for a lot of businesses and movie theaters were no exception. So what do you do when you're a movie theater and a significant number of patrons are trying to sneak popcorn in and you're losing money? you think about letting popcorn in. But at the time, there were three main problems with popcorn. Popcorn could be annoying to people who were not eating the snack. People are loud when they chomp, I guess. And popcorn smells, which I like, but some people don't. Popcorn is messy. You can't prevent it, it's gonna happen, okay? Movie theaters at the time were not built with popcorn ventilation in mind. They couldn't just put a popcorn machine inside of a fancy movie palace, but movie theaters needed to make more money to stay alive. Movie theaters took one of two approaches. First, some theaters continued to ban popcorn. These were typically the really fancy movie palaces, the fanciest of the fancy. They were not gonna mess up their carpets in the name of survival. <laughs> But many other theaters said, okay, we're just gonna sell popcorn inside. Was popcorn going to annoy some of their viewers? They decided not to care. Was popcorn gonna be low class and damage some of their infrastructure? They decided not to care. Was popcorn gonna be a problem because of their ventilation? Okay, well, you know. They had to address that one. Movie theaters who sold popcorn were largely profitable during the Great Depression, and those that did not sell popcorn were not. Eventually, popcorn and other concessions like candy and soda were added to movie palaces, but if there are a bunch of snack options sold, why is popcorn so closely associated with movie theaters? Part four, war. World War II was a big deal to put it lightly. And World War II changed a lot of things in the world at the time. The war massively disrupted supply chains. Several products that had previously been widely available were now experiencing shortages, such as gasoline, shoes, silk, and food items too. In May 1942, the first food item of World War II was rationed, and that food was sugar. With sugar rations in place, theaters could not sell candy and soda like they used to. But do you know what was not rationed? popcorn. Pre-World War II, movie theaters used coconut oil for popcorn, and they had to switch to peanut oil due to rations and supply chains. With that adjustment, popcorn was really the only movie theater snack at the time. And since movies were offering popcorn as their main snack, a lot of people started eating popcorn during film screenings. When the war ended and rations were lifted, popcorn was still the main snack. But was everybody happy about the popularity of popcorn? No! Enter the proposed bill to make popcorn illegal. In 1949, Oregon State Senator Dean Walker proposed a bill to have popcorn and peanuts banned in movie theaters. And according to his anti-popcorn bill, popcorn was anti-consumer because people came to see a movie, not hear people chew popcorn. In this proposed bill, repercussions for serving popcorn were severe. If a theater owner allowed people to eat popcorn, they would be fined $100 and subject up to 30 30 days in jail. Jail for serving popcorn at a movie theater. Some people thought this bill was a joke, but it was serious. There were actual deliberations over this bill. Free popcorn was handed out to attendees during the deliberations, which I think is hysterical. They were arguing how distracting popcorn was and people handed out popcorn as like a screw you kind of thing. And that definitely rubbed some people the wrong way. A senator named Thomas Mahoney thought the popcorn chewing was too loud and said that the people chewing popcorn Quote, popcorn eaters were just like morons in the movies. Let them get out with the hogs and eat in the barnyard. I mean, I think that's a little bit dramatic. The barnyard? You're having a meeting in the Senate and you're telling people to go out and eat in the barnyard? As 75% of movie attendees were eating popcorn during films at this time, it's not like anybody was really asking for this. The guy who proposed this bill was just a popcorn hater with power. One movie theater owner said during the deliberations, <clears throat> 
People are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if popcorn eating is their pursuit of happiness, let him go to it. I can't believe the Declaration of Independence was referenced during deliberations in the Senate regarding popcorn legality in movie theaters, but like, that happened. The American dream and the pursuit of happiness won out the bill obviously did not pass. Today, popcorn is widely accepted. Nobody's trying to ban it in theaters, as far as I know. But do you know what else was regulated? Movie ratings. At first, movie studios regulated themselves to keep the government away, but then things got really weird when naughty movies got involved. If you want to know about the history of movie ratings, click on this video next.